So uh, let's go ahead, let's get all 500 batteries hooked up. We could have a problem, but hopefully we don't. And I'm not gonna lie, I am a little bit nervous. 500 batteries total and 4,500 volts. It should be illegal to have this much fun in your own garage. Oh, oh, oh. That could have been bad. All right, let's see if this is conductive. All right, as you can see here, I have 500 nine volt batteries. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect all these batteries together for a total of 4,500 volts. And we're just gonna shock some stuff and see what happens. But before we do that, I need to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, NordVPN. If you don't know what a VPN is, it stands for a virtual private network. And basically what they do is they encrypt your data to keep it safe. Let's say that you are at a hotel, you're at a McDonald's, or you're just anywhere that has a public Wi-Fi connection. If you are connected to that public Wi-Fi without any type of VPN, no encryption, no protection, and a hacker is also connected to that same network, they can get your, your credit card information, your social security number, whatever it is that you have to steal from your laptop, phone, whatever. If you have a VPN, all of that data that is going through that public Wi-Fi is encrypted so nobody can have access to it and nobody can get into it. So that, that's number one, is keeping your data safe. Number two, is NordVPN has over 5,500 different servers across 60 different countries. Let's say you went on vacation to the UK or Ireland or Russia or wherever. If you were in another country and you have NordVPN, since they have so many servers across 60 different countries, you can pick whichever server you want your internet to be based through. If you are in the UK and you want to watch, say, the US version of Netflix, you can be in the UK and set your server to the US or vice versa. You can just set your location to whichever server you want and you get that that version of Netflix or Hulu or anything. So NordVPN is not only going to help you keep your data safe, you can watch some new shows or have some new internet experiences. So if you click the link in my description, you can get 68% off of a two-year plan that breaks down to $371 a month. And then on top of that, if you use the code TylerTube, whenever you check out, you get an additional free month. So go ahead, click the link in my description, get your 68% off. Now let's start hooking these batteries up, see what happens. Before we start going all crazy and just hooking all 500, all 500 of these batteries together and just shocking all kinds of stuff, we're gonna start off just a little bit slow. I have these light bulbs that are four watt 2000 hour life C7 E12 night light bulbs, whatever any of that means. So I have some of those and I want to see how many batteries it takes to blow one of these bulbs. So I have eight batteries. Let's start off with just one. All right, let's see what we can get. <laughs> Nothing. Didn't really expect that. Let's go with three batteries. See if that makes a difference. All right, three batteries. Oh, three batteries gives us a little bit of something. Just, just the like the tiniest little blow. We're gonna have to step it way up. We got eight batteries here. Twelve more. Twenty. Twenty batteries is gonna be uh, 180 volts. So we'll see what that does. All right, it's 180 volts. I have a feeling that probably not a lot's gonna happen. Ooh, look at that. That's uh, just as bright as it would be if it was plugged into the wall. 180 volts, and we're pretty much just getting there. Let's add on another five batteries, which puts us at 225 volts. No, it's just brighter. Let's add the rest of these. We'll see where that gets us. 33, 297 volts. <laughs> That's really bright. So, nothing crazy, just a really bright light. Let's just go ahead and add on a whole nother box. 405 volts. Let's see what this does. Huh. It just makes a really bright light, just like it did before. I wonder how many batteries it's gonna take to kill this thing. Because it's very high voltage, it's just very, very low amps. There should be roughly like 500 milliamps in this thing, but 405 volts. 
We might have to add a lot of batteries to kill this light bulb. I guess we're just gonna have to add another box. This will bring us up to 513 volts. All right, let's see. Oh, it's starting to, uh, it's starting to short circuit. But again, it's just a really bright bulb. This is gonna be way more batteries than what I thought. I guess let's just go ahead and add another box. We're really gonna run out of table space here pretty soon. Now this brings us up to 621 volts. And I bet that this still, I bet that light bulb is just gonna be bright and it's probably not gonna blow. So let's see here. Ah, uh, that's not even cool. Nothing exciting even happens. Somewhere around 600 volts. Let's get another one just to, just to clarify. Yeah. Man, I thought that was gonna be a lot cooler than that. So uh, let's go ahead, let's get all 500 batteries hooked up. And let's start shocking some stuff. All right, now is the real exciting part. It's just gonna be me sitting here for like an hour connecting all these batteries together. So that should be just full of excitement. <laughs> So, I th I was, I'm sitting here looking at this, and I think we could have a problem, because this is only uh, 69 batteries, so we might be able to make it to maybe 100 would be about the, the length, the width of this table, and then I don't, I mean, we might be able to have five banks deep, but it's going to be really close. So, we could run into some issues. But hopefully we don't. So enjoy me sitting here connecting these batteries. All right, I think you guys get the gist. I'm gonna continue doing what I've been doing until there's 500 of these connected. I don't think there's a reason to show you guys that. We have six banks of batteries, 500 batteries total, and 4,500 volts. And these batteries are, I don't know if you, how much of this you can see, but these batteries are trying to collapse this table. So hopefully that doesn't happen. So finally, let's start shocking some stuff. All right, I finally got everything hooked up. I got all the jumper wires, everything. This is the full 4,500 volts. And I'm not gonna lie, I am a little bit nervous. You just never know what's gonna happen. So I, the way I'm gonna do this is I have um, this PVC pole set up with a lead that goes down to the positive, and of course that's the negative. I have some distance between me and whatever I'm shocking, and nothing can short out or do anything too crazy. Obviously I have this hooked up to this nail, and I'm just gonna kinda arc it so that way you can see uh, the plasma. So let's go ahead and do that. Ooh. Oh, I'm nervous. Woo! You see that? That's a lot of power. If you guys remember in the video where I did this with 300 batteries, it was not that bright and it was kind of green. Okay, so now that we have created lightning inside the garage, our first test subject is going to be this apple. And don't worry, this is all, this is unplugged, or this is unhooked. So all I'm going to do, I think I'm just going to go like this and just kind of shove the apple on here. And I want to see how conductive it is. I want to see if you can, like if you, just by touching it, will it start arcing or just what's going to happen? All right, we are live. Now let's see, let's see what happens with this apple. Oh, I'm nervous. Ooh. <laughs> okay. Jeez. It's just, I don't even, I don't even know what's going on in there. Oh, I'm nervous. <laughs> it's literally just like vaporizing the apple. <laughs> That's actually smoking up the garage. All right, everything's unhooked, so we're all good. I want to cut that open, see. Oh, oh, that's actually not that, not that exciting. I figured, oh, it's really hot though, especially for only me only touching it for like two seconds. I wanted to see was if, because you can see where the the screw was in here. I kind of I wanted to see if it was like shooting like uh, 
just make it like a tunnel all the way to the ground straight through the apple, but it actually doesn't look like that. Apple, very conductive. Next up, we have this block of ballistics gel that everybody saw in the whip video. Don't even know if this stuff is conductive, but we are, we'll definitely find out. I have a copper nail that I'm going to stick in here, and then I'll stick the lead to that. And then we can stick the ground there, and we have our pole all ready, <laughs> ready to go. Oh, I don't know why this is so stressful. Go leave a comment. Do you think this is going to be conductive or not? I'm just gonna get, I'm gonna touch way up here on the top corner, we'll see. Oh, look at that. Not conductive hardly at all. Or at all. Where's the copper nail? Let's go and do it like right on top of the nail. Huh. Not conductive whatsoever. I guess that answers that question. This next one, I probably could have just Googled this, but I just want to see this for myself. I have a gallon of distilled water, and I don't know about you guys, but I've always heard that distilled water, uh, so pure or whatever, or doesn't have minerals in it or whatever it is, I've heard that distilled water does not conduct electricity. And I've also heard that like, whenever you drop your phone or something, or some electronic, whenever you drop it in regular water, that you should wash it off with distilled water because distilled water doesn't have any minerals or anything to conduct the electricity, so it's non-conductive. I don't know if that's true. Dump out some distilled water, and we're gonna see if you, it'll conduct 4,500 volts. That should be enough. We'll do this for the ground. We'll just hook this copper nail to this, and then we'll just set it right there. All right, let's see if this is conductive. My vote is, my vote is probably gonna be yes, but we shall see. Oh! Oh, but now that's cool. It's just barely conductive. It is conductive, but just barely, even with 4,500 volts. I'm gonna zoom in and see if I can get a good view of that. Because that, that's really cool. All right, I've moved the camera. Hopefully, in the camera you can see this. You see this little yellow or little purple uh, you can see the electricity. That is so cool. It almost looks like it's uh, coming off. It almost looks like the inside of one of those, um, I don't know what it's called, but one of those globes that like, it's a globe and it has a little ball in the middle and then you, like, you put your hand on it and then like the electricity goes to your hand. It looks like that. So I guess distilled water really isn't all that conductive. The next item that I want to see if it is conductive is liquid hand soap. I really don't know. I hope this has enough to felt this thing. I have no idea if this is gonna be conductive. I don't even have the slightest clue. I just hope it does something cool. So like before, what we'll do is let's drop the ground in over here. Now we are live. All 4,500 volts. I really hope, I mean, I know this isn't gonna happen. What would be really cool is if as soon as the electricity hit it, if it just started just bubbling up and foaming a lot, that'd be really cool. But I don't think that's what's gonna happen. Start way over here on the far side. <laughs> okay, that's, that's violent. Soap is really conductive. And it just like vaporizes. Yeah, it's like vaporizing and you can smell it burning. Woo! That's spewing soap everywhere. Oh, the ground is bubbling a little bit. Probably from, probably from the heat. Uh, I don't know if I wanna keep doing that. That's getting soap everywhere. I'll do it a couple more times. Oh, oh, oh. That, could have, that could have been bad. Let's stay over here. Okay, I think I've had enough of that. Oh, that's going to be so bad. Soap is going to be everywhere. Soap is extremely conductive. 
I would not have guessed that in a million years. So this next thing that I want to try, I've never done this before, but since we have all of this high voltage, this is going to be a perfect opportunity to try this. And I don't know how to pronounce it. It's called like a Lynchberg art, or it starts with an L, and it's a type of art where you take uh, baking soda and water, and then you dump it on a piece of wood, and then you put electrodes at either end, and then the electricity kind of like just like carves its way through the wood and it's supposed to make like these cool designs and stuff. I have uh, baking soda and water in this bottle and I'm sure it's probably not the right mixture or whatever because I don't remember what the mixture was or I don't remember what ratio it was. So I'm just gonna kind of soak this board down so that's nice and wet. And then we'll take our ground and put our ground on the nail. And then now, from what I understand, I should just be able to touch this electrode to this and then it should start doing its thing. So we'll see how true that is. Oh, it's working. Oh, look at that. It's working. Oh, kind of. Oh, maybe it needs some more water. That's actually working beautifully. Maybe we just need just a little bit more. Oh, oh. Oh, that was pretty intense. Okay, I see the problem here. I think the problem is that the heat makes all the water evaporate. Ooh. That actually looks like that could be pretty cool. Once again, not on the floor. I want to go multiple places. Oh! Ho-ho! I think that could be all right. Let's uh, clean that up and then we'll, we'll see what our results are. So you can see that I scrubbed this up and whenever you look at it, you can see here where I was touching it and over here it's extremely deep. Like the electricity really dug deep into the wood rather than trying to like get across the wood. But you can still see kind of through here to this area, you can see those really small uh, paths that actually look really cool. And it'd be cool if I could get those all the way across. I feel like this is like actually not that bad for the very first time ever doing this and also doing it with 509 volt batteries. <laughs> Definitely, if I knew more of what I was doing, I could definitely do this and it would come out a million times better. But this is still cool, nonetheless. And I'll probably put this on eBay for like uh, $10,000. So let's move on to our final experiment. All right, now, <laughs> this next test is stupid. I'm fully aware of that, but I've never let stupidity stop me before. So what we're gonna do is I have three packs of hot dogs. So what I, what I want to figure out is I want to see how many hot dogs the electricity will travel through just by simply like laying them down and letting the ends touch. So this might be really stupid. This might only go one or two hot dogs. This might be the dumbest thing you've ever seen, but we're going to do it anyway. We're just going to take the, the copper nail, kind of stick it through the first hot dog about to about there. And then we'll hook our ground to that. And right now everything is hot. So what I'm going to do is, obviously, we know this is going to work. So if we touch one end, <laughs> okay, we knew that was going to work. I didn't expect all that. Let's unhook our ground, just for safety, and then we'll put another hot dog right there, touching this one. I guess I'll use a screwdriver, even though it's a ground, so I should be safe. All right, so that's two hot dogs. See if it works with two hot dogs. <laughs> yeah, it shot a hole. There's a gap in those hot dogs now. Oh, I was trying to burn on the table. It is. It will burn on the table because of the hot dogs. Let's go ahead and do uh, 
four or five hot dogs. This whole table's like staticky. Let's start making a little, a little U-turn right there with our hot dogs. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. So five hot dogs. Let's see. <laughs> It'll go through five hot dogs. This is so dumb, but I'm, I'm loving this. Every second of this. You know, let's go ahead and do this. I'm just gonna set them all up because I, I honestly think that it'll go through all of them. So I'm just gonna go ahead and set them all up and then, <laughs> and then we'll try it and we'll see. All right, now let's go, let's just start over here. All right, we have 20 hot dogs lined up. I really think this is gonna work, no problem. But I think they're all touching. So let's go ahead and give it a try. 20 hot dogs. Okay, who's not touching? Oh. <laughs> oh. You gotta hook the ground up to complete the circuit. I got, <laughs> I'm so excited I got way ahead of myself. Now we can, now we can touch hot dogs. Let's see. <laughs> yeah. 20 hot dogs. It'll go right through 20 hot dogs. Jeez. <laughs> All right, so let's add some more. I cannot think of anything else that I'd rather be doing at 2.30 in the morning than lining up hot dogs to electrocute them. Oh yeah, we are gonna run out of space. So we're gonna have to do like a little I have to put these here, and then we'll just keep them running up to here. The hot dogs are all like, I don't know if you can hear that. They're all staticky. Every time you touch them, I get shocked. There's not even anything connected to them. That's very odd. 30 hot dogs. <laughs> oh, I'm having, this is, this is way too much fun. It should be illegal to have this much fun in your own garage. <laughs> oh. It's not as strong, so it's starting to dwindle down. So the hot dogs might actually have some, some pretty decent resistance. Where else on YouTube can you find this kind of content? Someone shocking, electrocuting hot dogs at 2.26 in the morning on a Monday night. See how much stronger that is here versus like here? Jeez, that, that, that smokes out all the hot dogs. But whenever you do it over here, Oh, it smokes it out there a little bit. That's because there, there's a gap between those. No gap. Ah, it still smokes a little bit. But then let's go like here. <laughs> that even shoots this way. So I guess hot dogs have quite the resistance. So if, <laughs> if your question is left unanswered, of how many hot dogs the, the all these batteries will go through. I don't have any more hot dogs, but I'm gonna, just gonna assume that it'll probably go through somewhere around probably 50 to 70. So that's <laughs> that's really all I have for you guys today. The uh, We've done it all. We've even electrocuted 30 hot dogs at once. Thank you so much for watching. If there's anything else that you wanna see me shock with these batteries, leave a comment down below, and I'll see you in the next one.